Hey there, this is Daniel West for Hero Arts. Today we're going to create this little card using Hero Arts blending brushes and a few stamps. Let's talk a bit about Hero Arts blending brushes. They are black with white bristles that are just soft and luxurious. I really enjoy using them because they can create a beautiful ombre effect on cards. They are very light in their application. I can make a very soft application or a very deep and dark application. I have two sizes here, of course. They come in a pack of two sizes. One size, the larger size I use for the dye inks and the smaller sizes I use for hybrid inks like the Hero Hues reactive line. I do that because I don't want to mix the pigment inks with my dye inks and my brushes. Today we're going to be using Hero Hues cardstocks in Dove White, Azalea, and Lapis. And we're going to be using Butter Bar and Bubblegum ink for the first panel. So I'm going to get the Dove White cardstock panel out. And with my blending brush, I'm going to ink it up and then tap it out on my workspace. I do that because I want to create a panel that's very soft and I want to build color up. So it's easy to build color on top of color, but once you lay down a very dark bit of color, it's hard then to take that away or cover it up. So you want to start by tapping your brush off in this instance and then adding the ink to the panel. Now this whole panel took me about six and a half minutes to complete and I've cut out a lot of it so that you don't spend six minutes watching me blend. But uh, I really enjoy the finished product. It is bright and not overly saturated. It is a beautiful panel and this will dry back a little bit. Now I'm going to take out a piece of Azalea cardstock and some Raspberry Jam ink and I'm going to create a vignette around my colored panel. And here I'm, I'm not starting by tapping my brush, but I am starting off the side of the cardstock. So I'm taking my brush and starting on the glass and then brushing it over the side of my panel, almost to the center, leaving the center the original pink color. And then I'm going to add this navy ink to the edges to really darken that up. And I think that panel is just fantastic. I'll put these two aside and create something completely different with my lapis cardstock. Here I've got the same navy ink and my blue brush out here. And I'm doing the same technique as I did with the azalea, but with different colors. Then I'm going to do or add a twist to this. You can actually paint scenes with brushes like this. Although they're not going to be super detailed if you don't use stamps, you can create a nice background with the uh, light coming through. Like we're going to do a night scene here with reflection pond in it. And so I'm just going to add bits of ink in places by tapping the cardstock with my ink loaded brush. And I'm not concerned really over harsh lines. In fact, I don't mind them at all. I think they add a bit to what I'm trying to do here and they will dry back a little bit. So here I've got the edge of my pond. I've got a tree line in the back and a moon kind of shining in behind it and all of it is reflecting down at the bottom. So basically I'm just splitting my cardstock in half and then inking up a middle line on it. Now we're going to add one of my favorite stamp sets from Hero Arts, the You're My Universe stamp set. We're going to just add this little array or stream of stars to the top in white embossing powder. So let's prep our cardstock with some anti-static powder and then ink it up with embossing and watermark clear ink from Hero Arts. 
I like to stamp mine a few different times. First to pick up the powder that I laid down. Then to add more ink to my panel. I'm going to stamp it again. And then I'm going to add my white embossing powder. Now, my panel wasn't completely dry when I added my uh, embossing powder to it. So I'm just taking out one of my brushes, a cheap watercolor brush, and brushing off bits that are way out of line. Now there are some stragglers on there and it's perfectly fine because I'm creating a starry night. So they just kind of add to the feel. Now I'm going to take out the tree line from my Magical Forest stamp set and ink it up with navy ink. Mask off a bit of it on my card panel so that you don't see the actual line of trees or the hill that they're on. And then I'm going to stamp it again, but in reverse. So since it's a reflecting pond or a little lake that we're trying to create here, it would be nice if the stamps were the exact mirror image, but it doesn't really matter. You're just trying to give the effect of the reflection. And if you don't get the exact mirror image, I don't think it's really going to matter a whole lot. I think it still looks really great just like this. So I'm just going to flip the stamp over, ink it up with some navy ink, and I'm only going to stamp it one time because I want the reflection to be just a little lighter than the actual trees in the lakeside. Then I'm going to repeat the process on the other side of my card panel. Again, stamping the bottom only once and then flipping it over and stamping the top a few times to make it a little darker than the bottom. One, two, and that's it. Isn't it beautiful? I just love it. Now I'm gonna take out a Uniball Signo white gel pen, add a moon up top, add a moon on the bottom, And you can just adjust the size of the moon as you go. I'm going to eventually make these just a little bit bigger. But I'm going to add stars at the top and then try to add the reflection on the bottom. Same size as best I can. What we're trying to go for is the illusion of a reflection. And I can see that I'm not getting it exactly right. But it is exactly enough. So... <laughs> It's good to also uh, create some stars off the side, going off the side of your panel. It makes for a continuation of your design, and the eye is pleased by this. Also, uh, I'm going to trim my panel down. So close your eyes if you don't want to see this. My cardstock doesn't complain, but uh, I did want to pop this up on some other cardstock. So I'm going to grab another panel of the lapis cardstock and then add some navy ink to it. Now I know that Hero Arts has navy ink but I had this all right in front of me and I think this works just as well. So I'm going to pop it up on the front of my newly created navy cardstock, navy lapis cardstock, and then we are done with our card front. Next, we're going to turn our eyes to creating a sentiment strip. I take out some pitch black cardstock and my embossing and watermark clear ink. A sentiment from the You're My Universe stamp set. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit off screen there. <laughs> but uh, ink it up a few times and then cover it with embossing powder, melt it till it's smooth and beautiful, and then trim it down. I always line my sentiment strip up to the edge of my plastic guide on my guillotine trimmer there. Makes for a nice, even sentiment strip. Then I'm going to take out some foam tape, trim it down, add it to the back of my sentiment strip and pop it up there on the front. Now you can see some stragglers of embossing powder in the bright light on my 
video, but I couldn't actually see them in person. <laughs> so I didn't see them there, but I can take care of them with a sand eraser afterward. To finish off my project, I am just adding some icicle sequin mix to the front with some precision glue, and I just love the result. Have you tried these different ways of creating with blending brushes? Check them out. And if you haven't subscribed to the Hero Arch channel yet, what are you waiting for? Hit that button.